After this enlightening talk for new technology and maybe enlightening public policy, uh, let's talk about entrepreneurial communities. Uh, talking about sustainable planet, we are now going to dive into still the world of robotics. We saw a little bit of robotics use case with Kent and how we can accelerate the development of circular economy products and services around the globe. This is something that consumers expect and the pressure on companies to deliver will continue to intensify. Part of the solution is Atacama Biomaterials. The, their AI robotics platform company developed the tools for renewable biomaterials. Their aim is simple, to bring organic materials to market initially for packaging and reduce industry's overall environmental footprint. They are already making an impact in retail and pharma. We are delighted to have with us the founder and CEO of Atacama Biomaterials, Paloma gonzalez Rochas, whose work synthesized the cutting edge realms of AI and sustainable materials, as well as uh, the co-founder, Jose Tomas Dominguez, who is committed to advancing eco-friendly innovation. So they will share their vision of the bioeconomy in the age of experience. Let's give them a round of applause. And I didn't mention they're part of the lab. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, We're excited uh, to show you our work for our company, Atacama Biomaterials. My name is Paloma Gonzalez, sorry. And I'm here with my co-founder, Jose Tomas Dominguez. Uh, our company uh, accelerates the deployment of low carbon materials powered by robotics and AI with a simple mission, as Patrick said. We're building biomanufacturing so these materials can become mainstream in the world. In the quest for a sustainable future, the concept of a bioeconomy holds immense, uh, immense significance. In the age of experience and intelligence, it brings forth the capitalization of biological streams, our natural resources. Um, but uh, this, if we want these natural resources to continue fuel growing societies, we need to hold them uh, in a way that they work in the short and in the long term. Atacama Biomaterials is at the forefront of this movement, addressing three uh, main pressing environmental challenges, energy intensive manufacturing, excessive carbon emissions, and plastic pollution. By harnessing the power of renewable materials and cutting edge technologies, including predictive algorithms, machine learning simulations, and robotic manufacturing, we're paving the way for a future where economic growth go hand in hand with ecological well-being. There is something going on with the slides, but <laughs> thank you. Uh, over the past four years, we've driven a transformative advancements at the intersection of science, technology, sustainability, and entrepreneurship. My research in applied machine learning at MIT unlocked biopolymer understanding through computation, while Jose Tomas integrated these technologies with advanced manufacturing techniques by developing production equipment at 3DX Experience Lab. These proprietary technologies overcome renewable polymer key barriers, one of them being variability, enabling widespread deployment of these materials for production. Through this work, uh, we won prestigious entrepreneurship competitions at Harvard and MIT. We raised pre-seed funds and validated our product in the industry with pharma and retail, as Patrick mentioned. This has, has propelled us as a racing startup in Boston biotech and climate tech ecosystem. As Kent mentioned, one of the most interesting entrepreneurial places in the world. And through this work, we arrived to a, a major conclusion. Yeah. The solution to the global plastic crisis is in nature. The material that you see in this picture looks like plastic, but it's made from 100% organic materials. Thank you. So you, you may think, how do they do that? And why is not today in the market? Well, uh, we start from identifying biogenic sources that go through our platform, a tailored toolkit to make these raw materials comply to the needs of our clients. And it's composed by the power combination of AI and robotics technologies. 
Through precise control and optimization, we transform these renewable materials into biogenic products that are not only sustainable, but also fully recyclable and biodegradable, com completing the circle of nature. By embracing this closed loop approach, uh, we ensure that our products regenerate the environment at the end of their lives and contribute to a circular economy where resources are conserved in an infinite cycle of life. Um, unlocking the untapped potentials of biomaterials have been a driving force for us. Natural polymers that you see here are everywhere, are abundant, are cost-effective, being cellulose, the most abundant of them. Um, people are worried sometimes about cutting trees for packaging, and it's completely understandable. Um, but that's why we focus in the use of recycled cellulose for these applications. These raw materials are easily produced and degraded through biological processes. Not that many people know that cellulose is also a polymer, just like plastic. Nature produces these raw materials in inexpensive ways. And this is something that we capitalize in Atacama Biomaterials. By combi combining our expertise in science, materials, innovative technologies, and advanced, uh, and advanced manufacturing, uh, these materials uh, has led us to think to how to turn them into uh, mainstream products. So four years ago, uh, at the Sol Systems 3D Experience Lab here in Waltham, we developed this 3D printer for wood. Uh, we started by merging additive manufacturing with renewable materials, resulting in one of the first wood 3D printers of the world. We successfully 3D printed an organic wood composite with a tailored made screw that we were really happy. Uh, but the solution was completely biodegradable and functional at the same time. This win led us to think and ask why these materials are not mainstream? Uh, why, if we can do it, why others can't? Uh, why every product that has a short span application, such as packaging and clothes, are not made with renewable polymers? Thank you. Uh, during a conference workshop in Egypt, we faced a surprising difficulty. If Egyptian biomass has a completely different chemical behavior than Boston's. Uh, biopolymers are variable depending on environmental conditions, on the region, on the weather. Instead of visiting the pyramids, uh, we spent three days in the lab redefining the material formula. We couldn't work anymore with our 3D printer. Uh, definitely not what we expected from our trip. Despite the variable change uh, challenge, our unexpected material adventure in Egypt served as a catalyst for developing AI solutions that ensure seamless global deployment. So from these four years of research, we concluded that our minds, machines, uh, or computa computations capabilities weren't ready to deal with the challenges presented by bio-based materials. With these conclusions in mind at Atacama, we have revolutionized the production of renewable materials. Our toolkit integrated renewable materials with AI and robotics to accelerate the transition to the circular economy. Our AI enables the use of diverse feedstock sources, so different types of raw materials or different types of cellulose, and which are transformed into customizable manufacturing-ready formulas, revolutionizing renewable materials production. This enables global deployment, reduces time to market by 10 times, and produces significantly more reliable biomaterials, avoiding accidents like the one that we had in Egypt. Moreover, our AI controlled the cost of our products, making them economically viable. By leveraging cutting-edge robotics techniques and naturally compatible feedstock, we have eliminated chemical synthesis, reduced the carbon footprint by 80%, and eliminated the use of harmful chemicals for the environment. Atacama's AI-driven technology and its ability to work with diverse biogenic materials give us a unique advantage. Compared to our competitors, Atacama's approach offers more flexibility, adaptability, and potential for discovery of renewable polymers. Our AI achieved its first major success by reformulating our cellulose-based material, increasing its tensile strength 
from 1 to 50 megapascals, which is 50 times, uh, showcasing the remarkable capability of our technology to significantly enhance material performance. And I guess that I can say that everyone here loves wine. We are Chilean, uh, a wine country, and uh, the Sol Systems French team, I think that they love wine too, as like, like us. <laughs> Um, well, our technology could capitalize on wine waste to make new plastics, reducing their, their environmental footprint and using a natural resource. This process can be extended to any biomass, uh, from industrial waste, from agricultural waste, from nature in general. So we can use lobster shells from New England, favorite of Boston, avocado shells from nuts, uh, uh, avocado shells and nuts from South America, rice husks from Africa and Asia. And any of these materials can be repurposed into our feedstocks. Our capability of turning this bi biomass into commercially viable products is the result of our AI simulating polymer interactions at a molecular level with our own molecular dynamic model driven with AI, which you can see a polymer chain folding into its radius of gyration here in the video. This empower us to predict their properties and their co discover new materials, revolutionizing the development of sustainable materials and enable us to unlock endless possibilities for innovation. Nice turn, my co-founder. In order to achieve widespread adoption of renewable materials, we recognize the need to develop a scalable and cost-effective manufacturing process capable of high volume productions. This was a significant challenge and they, as the industry was facing a major roadblock, chemical synthesis, hindering the large scale deployment of sustainable materials. This is where we saw our opportunity. To meet the specific requirements of renewable materials, we recognize the imperative for a manufacturing process that is precisely tailored for the unique characteristics and properties of these materials. At Atacama, we have ingeniously addressed this challenge by harnessing the power of naturally occurring polymers, allowing nature to do the heavy lifting. Our innovative approach essentially involves triggering a reaction and patiently awaiting the remarkable transformations of these materials from these materials into high quality plastics. It's almost amusing to witness how nature takes charge as we simply facilitate and observe a mesmerizing process unfold. This is not only exemplifies the remarkable synergy we found between science, technology, and nature, but also highlights a commitment to developing sustainable solutions that embrace the inherent efficiency and beauty of the natural world. Personally, my favorite result out of this is that by leveraging on natural reactions, we achieve a reduction of 80% in the carbon footprint in comparison to the plastic product production process. This groundbreaking accomplishment led us to the creation of materials with minimal environmental impact throughout their entire life cycle. We're talking production, its use case, and of course, its end of life. However, what truly sets out apart this process is that it enables the use of renewable energy sources. So by combining the natural inherent properties with these sustainable energies, we unlock the development of net zero materials, making a significant step forward for a truly sustainable future. At Atacama, we are disrupting the market with Woodpack, a game-changing sustainable packaging solution. This is a lightweight biomaterial that is 10 times lighter than cardboard and helps our clients re reduce their energy consumption while offering a fully compostable and paper recyclable alternative that just outperforms competitors. Woodpack will protect their products and the environment. Remarkably, Woodpack allows our clients to overcome the trade-off between the clean end of life of cardboard and the lower energy consumption of lightweight plastics on transportation. The lightweight biomaterials, or our lightweight biomaterial flexible film will replace boxes 
um, enabling a significant reduction of up to 90% in the energy consumption during transportation. Woodpack combines the lightweight of plastics with the sustainability of cardboard, providing a sustainable packaging option that maintains the necessary strength functionality without compromising the environment. As you can see, Atacama has developed a fir the first only scalable solution with competitive advantage, performance, cost, impact, and a perfect market fit to replace plastics. So as a mechanical engineer, I have to confess here that the plastics have an amazing performance, and of course, they are low cost, but the world cannot tolerate their environmental impact anymore. We've seen PLAs and PHAs as the pro most promising solution, but unfortunately, unfortunately, they rely on chemical synthesis, an energy intensive process that results on expensive materials with a high carbon footprint. Even worse, this process alters its chemical properties at such a level that they are no longer naturally biodegradable. And they require, require us to deploy infrastructure that hasn't been deployed in the last 10 years. A lot of energy is being put on seaweed, fungus, silk, bioplastics. Unfortunately, their performance hasn't been growing as the research has been being developed. And they need to deploy huge industries just to extract its raw materials. And well, paper seems promising, but that's what brings us to develop Woodpack. Its performance isn't enough. So this has differentiated us from other plastic companies. We have an AI process that enables us to overcome the key challenges that bio-based materials present to manufacturing process, and we can provide a low cost and a clean end of life. Atacama Biomaterial Technologies have the remarkable potential to eliminate the production of 20 gigatons of CO2 by 2050, contributing to a significant reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions. Furthermore, our innovative, our innovative materials clean end of life can overcome the plastic waste problem, potentially eliminating more than 30 million tons of plastic waste annually. By tackling these challenges, we aim to make a profound impact on the environment and create a more sustainable future for the generations to come. So this is when things turn a little personal. Um, on 2018, in parallel, Paloma and me conducted a trip to the Atacama Desert. Paloma doing research, I was working on another startup deploying so robots that clean solar panels in the desert. At that same moment, in different places, we both witnessed the plastic dams that were forming in the Atacama Desert and got into the same conclusions. We, got, we made our life mission to stop this problem. Even worse, we got to understand in the 2020s the health implications that plastics are having on our health. Plastics have become so abundant in our daily lives and their presence in our bodies is a growing concern for the scientific community. Microplastics can be found in the air we breathe, in the water we drink, the food we eat, and in all your bloodstreams. By reducing the reliance on traditional fossil-based plastics, we have the potential of mitigating the health risk associated with plastic exposure and contribute to a safer and healthier future for all of us. Luckily, Atacama has gained significant traction from industry leaders, MIT and Harvard accelerated programs. We have done market discovery applications across markets, leading companies, and have our first clients. Right now, with the significant support of the Salt Systems, we are working through, we are applying their state-of-the-art tools into scaling our manufacturing process for massive deployment worldwide. We envision a future of global expansion through distributed manufacturing, where our sustainable solutions can be produced local, locally and on demand. With our AI-driven tools, and why, something that Paloma explained really good, um, we unlock the potential to creating materials with consistent performance using regionally available feedstock, enabling us to meet the unique needs of different markets. This decentralized approach fosters sustainability, reduces transportation cost and carbon footprint, and empower communities to adopt eco-friendly materials and align, that align with their specific requirements. As, 
as we, at least was presented to us, this work goes beyond packaging. The bioeconomy revolution is just extending, starting. The Atacama technologies go beyond packaging with the potential to transform industries such as biofuels, bioelectronics, biologic drugs, biosolvents, among a lot of them. The possibilities of the bioeconomies are infinite, mirroring the limitless potential of Atacama's technology. We are poised to drive the innovation sustainability into a new era of possibilities in the ever-expanding realm of bio-based materials. We are building a future where biomaterials unlock sustainable innovation and drive positive change by harnessing the power of nature through cutting at edge technologies. It's time for the Atacama Desert to blossom again. With you, we can make a difference today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paloma. Thank you very much, Jose Thomas. Um, I dream of a time where I will have a packaging box telling me I was a grape of wine before. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Uh, I had the question about the next potential beyond packaging, but you answered. Uh, are there any questions in the room? Yeah, there's one question over there. Take about, about the mechanical properties of uh, the packaging. Did you have a look on the chemical properties? I mean, about the barrier, because when we talk about plastic, there is some barrier to, uh, to vapor, to water. Uh, mm. So that's uh, also a question for the usage. That's a really good question, because it's the main challenge biomaterials face. But we also have to say that it's the main challenge plastics have faced. And research has not been able to find a polymer that is a complete vapor barrier or air barrier. So that's why current plastics are combined with aluminum. And if you buy a chips package, you'll see the gray layer. That's aluminum. Um, so our research has focused on that, the integrate, like merging wood pack with aluminum. And something that has the also always the following question, Yes, we can recover then the aluminum and recycle in a different waste stream. Yes, environmental impact is really important for us and we wouldn't allow to, our materials to merge with, to bond with aluminum if it wasn't ensure that we can recover it. Uh, thank you for this uh, very nice presentation. In fact, uh, we have been doing uh, similar things in Singapore as well. Uh, and as I may share a little bit tomorrow, but, uh, my question is that uh, what is the uh, price point in terms of competition, uh, competitiveness with uh, petrochemical derived plastics? So um, our manufacturing process right now is at low scale, so it's definitely expensive than plastics, but our goal is to advance towards the production of one ton per day. So that's the next level machine we're working on, and that will produce at a 60% cost of LDPE which is the plastic that is used for flexible films. Yeah, and so this, this product, these materials are very cost sensitive. So the companies that buy them are, are focused on the cost. And something surprising is that lots of these companies are willing to sacrifice the performance that we all, th we all think is a given. Like for example, for uh, big pharmaceuticals uh, are willing to do that uh, because uh, they were, using, they were used to a certain standard that was imposed for the materials that were available in the market. But now that we realize of their environmental impact and companies want to stop using them, they realize that they were using something that they actually don't need. So, it's, so the main discussion right now is about cost and scalability. And just one last thing, I guess we both arrived into the same conclusion when we analyzed the scope. So that was the reason we pivoted from 3D printing to other advanced manufacturing techniques. 3D printing could, as it did scales, scale didn't reduce the cost as, 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 at the rate we needed in order to make cost viable materials. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paloma. Thank you very much, uh, Jose Thomas. This is amazing. I guess we can say sustainability goes with lower footprint and renewed and innovative handprint. 
And I guess you guys are clearly addressing the two.